More than $17 million are coming to the metro area and Baton Rouge for safety upgrades and community projects. The money is coming from the federal government, secured by, uh, in part, Congressman uh, uh, Troy Carter uh, from this district here in New Orleans. Congressman Carter is joining us uh, to explain more on where that money is going, where it's coming from, and what communities will benefit the most. We'll also talk about Ukraine in a couple of seconds. Congressman Carter, thank you for joining us this morning. Eric, thank you very much. I'm very proud to, to announce these community projects, which will provide uh, tremendous uh, help to our communities. Uh, we've got $6 million for Sewage and Water Board. We know how uh, much trouble and need that we have with our wastewater and stormwater improvements. Uh, $6 million from our, from our omnibus budget bill, $8 million for the uh, New Orleans Convention Center for the sanitary sewer and stormwater projects a million dollars for mental health for the city of Baton Rouge, $2 million for LSU Health Sciences to do further COVID research. Xavier University will get $2.5 million to create a STEM center at St. Mike's dormitory on campus. Uh, Ninth Ward Stadium, which is one that I'm particularly proud of, yeah. is to create an athletic center in the Ninth Ward, which will be a draw to one, give a boost in the arm to um, to the Ninth Ward to create cross-referencing of neighborhoods to come together and stop our kids from having to travel so far for athletics. Uh, this part of the world will now have its very own athletic stadium, uh, which is huge. Uh, $5 million for Eastern New Orleans for a multimodal transportation upgrade. Again, a significant investment in Eastern New Orleans, um, one that is desperately needed for a community that is rich and strong but needs a shot in the arm. Um, and then, of course, um, $3 million for our beloved Waldenburg Park. We know that Waldenburg Park has become uh, a great venue for the French Quarter Fest, for the uh, fried chicken festival for the various events along the river. It's also where Rex and uh, and, uh, and and Zulu meet on on uh, Lundi Gras. And Zulu Lundi Gras, absolutely. So this gives us an opportunity to give uh, to revitalize this 30-year-old park um, with safety, uh, mobility, uh, the economic benefits of all of these projects are are incredible. This is a 17.1. Um, million dollar investment and if you add the last two it's actually 30 million dollars from the federal government that will directly impact uh the second congressional district now very proud that we're able to uh to bring these home and is this all part of the infrastructure bill the bipartisan bill that even some in louisiana voted against well actually this one is not a part of the, the okay. bipartisan we have one point uh, two trillion that were a part that's a part of the bipartisan infrastructure bill. This is a part of the omnibus budget bill um, where, where we have an opportunity to identify those projects in our districts that have merit. Uh, and these all have strong merit. They made it their way through the budget process. We we're able to to defend uh, and present this and, and finally see it in the final budget, which now has been signed by the president. So these dollars are locked in and coming to the second congressional district. And so that's in addition to the, uh, the uh, money from the infrastructure bill that will also be coming to Louisiana. That is exactly correct. It is an addition to, which is again, uh, unprecedented, historic time, a great opportunity for, for Louisiana that we have uh, needed dollars that are coming into our communities as providing resources. Uh, the Ninth Ward Park, I mean, that is an incredible advancement for the city of New Orleans. A uh, million dollars for research on mental health in Baton Rouge. Um, the multimodal transportation hub for Eastern New Orleans, uh, investing in our universities, LSU, Tulane, and Xavier. Uh, these are all uh, investments that will, will bring incredible returns on investment for the community. And let's talk about what's going to happen uh, at, at the Capitol today. Uh, a joint session of Congress will be, uh, uh, will be uh, watching the president of Ukraine addressed the joint session asking for more help. He, he uh, addressed uh, the parliament in Canada yesterday saying that, that his country needs help. And he, he told them, imagine if your homes were being bombed and, and stuff like that. How much more can, can NATO countries, can the U.S. do for Ukraine? Well, first of all, we should do everything that we can. And we are in a very bipartisan way working with the president to advance as many resources as we can. The Congress passed last week 
a $13.6 billion uh, relief package that's being sent directly to the Ukrainians. Um, we have um, pushed to hold Putin accountable. Um, we are no longer purchasing um, oil from uh, from Russia. We're also uh, toughening our sanctions to make sure that we cripple them economically. Um, so I think the Congress uh, and the president has done an incredible job. We need our NATO partners to, to kick in and do even more. Uh, and we continue to listen. Today we'll, we will hear from uh, President Zelensky uh, and where we can lend more aid, we will. Uh, this is an important issue. When people ask, well, why are we involved? The, when we protect our foreign flanks, we protect our domestic flanks. It's important that America as a world power weighs in and we hold Putin accountable. We cannot allow this kind of unwarranted, uh, unprovoked aggression to go unchecked. And, and there has been a lot of controversy over the uh, Poland's offer to send MiG fighters into Ukraine, but through uh, uh, a, a U.S. air base. Uh, the president is not for that. Yesterday, Senator John Kennedy said he thought that uh, it was a good idea, that it should happen. He, he said of Mr. Biden that he has a wishbone rather than a backbone. Uh, what are your comments on that? Well, I think the time for fancy quips and, and those kind of antidotes are, are quite frankly, uh, unproductive. What we need to be doing is swinging together. We need to be working together and not criticizing or finding cute um, slang. What we need to do is to join together to help our Ukrainian brothers and sisters to defend democracy across the country and provide resources. And for the now most part, it is bipartisan support for that. Well, there is. It's bipartisan across the board, but um, I think, and, and to, to suggest wishbone versus backbone, I just don't think that there's this place for that right now. We're talking about something very serious. We're talking about people's lives. We're talking about providing resources. We're talking about uh, a unified Congress. We all stood on the steps of the Capitol last week in unison in our support for Ukraine. Um, many of the suggestions that were brought to the White House were brought in a bipartisan way. The president has listened and acted. I don't know that any criticism at this point is anything but um, brinksmanship, and we just can't afford that. I think what's important is that Republicans and Democrats stand unified, as we have, to make sure that we send a message to Putin that we will not support his war. We will not fund your war. We will stand firmly with our NATO partners to make sure that we have the crippling sanctions in place and provide resources so Ukrainians can adequately defend themselves. And quickly, before I let you go, Congressman, uh, yesterday the Senate passed unanimously to uh, make daylight saving time permanent. Do you think Congress will do the same? You know, I sure hope so. I think that it is uh, something that's outdated. As you know, this was created in 1942 um, for reasons that are no longer needed. Um, for all the right reasons, I think the opportunity to to advance this issue, I'm very proud and happy that the Senate moves so swiftly, which proves that they can move fast when they want to. Uh, and now we have an opportunity to to uh, finalize that and send it to the president, and I'm hopeful we'll do just that. And it was a unanimous vote yesterday, which does not happen very often. All right. It doesn't happen all the time. But no, it does not. It happens. All right, Congressman Troy Carter, thank you for joining us this morning. Eric, thank you very much. Have a great morning.